welcome to the Shelly Studio. Today I'm working on my Gina B. Aaron's Design Team project and she has these spools in her Etsy store. I believe they are um, made by her husband. But I saw it and I just wanted it. I didn't, I don't know why I wanted it, but <laughs> um, I finally came up with an idea. My first thought was to make this like last, was it last month? I did the journal on a bottle. I was like, well, let's do a journal on a spool. And then I'm like, everybody's doing these snippet rolls. We could do a snippet roll on the spool and still decorate it kind of like a journal. So I did put two layers of gesso on there um, just to make sure my paint was gonna stick. And I believe this is Thalo Turquoise. And um, gesso, I put way, you can see I put way too much out there. I was thinking it was so dark and I wanted it lighter turquoise that I would need all the white. But I don't, I didn't need that much white. And I really don't think I needed all that much turquoise either. Kind of goes far. Um, the spool isn't really all that much surface. <laughs> But, um, so I'm just going to go around and paint everything. It was a little awkward painting it, but, um, it was fun. It's like fun to try and create something on a new object. <laughs> um, I'm really having fun doing sort of three-dimensional looking quote. I'm doing air quotes in case you can't see them. Journal pages. <laughs> So yes, um, I'm going to edit this way down because it did, it was a very long process getting it all painted and stuff. So you probably don't need to see me do the entire spool. So we're going to jump forward just a little bit. Okay, so now I've got, see I have all that paint left over. I've got that done. Now I want to stencil on the ends of the spool, some sort of decorative pattern. And I just pulled out one of Gina's stencils. It's kind of a multi-layer. I will put the number on the screen once I look it up and go back and edit that. Because <laughs> I can't remember it at the moment. But it's it's a fun one where you can layer different things and um, I just thought it was fun to use the one pattern. I actually use this pattern and then just the straight kind of dotted line that looks like stitching and this totally looks like um, folk art painting um, <laughs> here I'm deciding which one I want what I want to use um, but I just end up adding okay fiddle fiddle okay get over there <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna add those little dots the sort of stitching look in between kind of gives it a finished look and I do do that on both sides and then oh this is what I did with the uh, all that leftover paint <laughs> so I, it doesn't go to waste I'll use it up all right so now I am I want to put some words on it so I figured I would um, collage them on so I'm going to stamp some words onto some tissue. I did check her stamps. They're a little too tall to go around the edge of that spool. So I have these ones from Seth After. I'm just going to do a mass stamping on this tissue and then cut some out with water. And hopefully they'll just kind of disappear when I collage them on. don't mind the edits um, 
this whole project, or at least the footage for the project, the stuff that I had recorded, was about an hour long, and um, I just think it's too long. So <laughs> I shortened it by editing a lot. See, there we go. Boom. I actually don't think I recorded me doing all that, because that would have taken forever. Now here, I'm going to do it right along the edge. I was deciding which which stencil job was the best and that making that the top and then I'm using some Mod Podge paper um, Mod Podge and I think you know I don't use it that often it was the bottom of the jar um, it didn't make it very transparent I think matte medium would have done a better job this one was kind of glossy which um, Mod Podge usually is a little bit shinier than matte medium. So I do end up actually um, glazing over the top of it so everything's equally shiny. <laughs> but I'm just picking random words. They, not in any particular um, order or meaning. They always have like a journaling or travel or creative sort of connotation for me and that's kind of what this Seth after set is. <laughs> so I like that stamp set. Alright so I don't know why I had that little clip in there but um, here's where I felt like it um, too white so I thinned out the thalo turquoise with some glazing medium so that it'd be I mean it's already transparent so it'd be even more transparent and just went over those so that um, they didn't look so white all right so my idea is to do create a snippet roll um, and put it on the spool a lot of people do them with fabric and sewing, but I'm just going to do strips of book pages and just add bits and pieces. So that stack to the left is um, Gina B. Aaron's digital downloads, um, several different ones. She has lots of fun little watercolors and doodles over watercolors. I like those a lot. And then the little pile of feathers is one of her digitals. I just tore it up so that I'd have it ready. And then these are birds that I've made out of scrap paper. So I created a few patterns and just did a whole bunch of scrappy birds. And so this is where I'm getting stuff for my little snippet roll. And as I was doing this, I was like, you know, what would be fun? And I might convert this for next year. I might turn that spool or I might buy another one. I don't know. I might turn that spool into a journal for the year. Might not be big enough. But just for like major events or just like one little thing a month. Just pick something at random. Don't you think that'd be a fun idea? I mean, you could do a trip. You could do like log um, the things you did and little snippets from where you've been, ephemera bits, and then put that in a long strip and put it up on the spool and then um, put the title or the destination on the edge of the spool. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay, Gina, my spool has the little round um, bolts on it. Um, you should probably make some with flat ones if you haven't already figured that out. Because then it would sit nice and flat and you could have it on your bookshelf and it would have your travel, your trip on it. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay. I think I want to make one for next year. <laughs> anyway, I'm just taking items at random. And I know my desk is like super messy. Um, as I'm doing this. So it's really hard to see the strip I'm working on as compared to what's piled on my desk. So I do try to clean it up a little bit every once in a while. Um, yeah, I'm just 
it's very, very random. I'm just taking whatever I find. Like this thing was just a torn up piece of a book or I don't, it could have been newsprint. It felt kind of like newspaper, so. Um, yeah, a couple of terracotta bowls. I don't know. They were the right color. I, I was liking the color. So that's why I cut them out of the magazine in the first place and that's why they get stuck on here. I haven't even talked about Gina. So she has an Etsy store. <laughs> if you don't already know that, I will put her link down below in the description box. It'll be her link tree link and it'll go to all of her um, like her Etsy store and her blog and so you can find all the fun stuff it'll go her blog has a list I believe of all the design team members so you can go find their projects there if you'd like and um, yeah her Etsy store she has stencils stamps um, digital downloads original art lots of fun stuff please check it out um, Small businesses right now can can get all the business they they can. They need all, need it all. So um, make sure you check her out. And yeah, so there's about Gina. <laughs> now she's the one of the first people I saw on YouTube um, back before I started. She was one of uh, the people that inspired me to start art journaling and doing mixed media and stuff. And then I just decided, why not film it? <laughs> and I'm really happy I started filming my uh, artwork. Because, you know, there's sometimes I look back at something, I'm like, I have no idea how I made that. And the stuff from before I started filming, I some of them I have no idea how I got the result I got. Because it's been too long. You forget. So, um... I've really liked um, going back and saying, okay, now what did I do here? And going back and looking at my video and uh, remembering how I did what I did. Anyway, I know I'm rambling a bit, but this is a long video. <laughs> I hope you guys have been liking the videos I'm producing. Um, if you do, please leave me a comment. Um, if you have a favorite, let me know what that was. Or, um, yeah, or ideas of crazy things. I could put a journal page on. You know, we could do that. <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Share with your friends. And my phone just went off. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that funky little bird sitting on top of the circle and I'm like, I didn't leave it there. I didn't even notice it sitting there. Um, I kind of like it on there. I think I might have to go back and glue that on. Because <laughs> it's a very funky looking bird, I must say. That's just a... That's that's a stiff one. That's harder to, start to turn around the spool. Um, you might notice when I attach it to the spool. That's one of Tim Holt's um, ephemera packs, his butterflies and stuff. So it's like stiffer stuff. Oh, and I'm using glitter glue. I've decided this is my new super favorite. Um, I like Eileen's, but you know what? It it gets too hard. Like by the by halfway through the bottle, I can't get it out anymore. Um, this is my first bottle of glitter glue. It's the smaller one, so we'll we'll see. You know if it keeps coming out all the way to the end, or if it gets all hard and I can't get it out anymore. <laughs> so I decided um, I wanted to do three of these strips just for. Um, a sample sake and I wanted one of Gina's images on the front of it so I'm going to add putting the bird in the middle strip and adding another strip 
and yeah so we're gonna decorate this one and put um, some more fun stuff on there and get one of Gina's digis the front of this now those papers that I'm putting on there handwritten um, they were just leftover scraps from another project I did I had a bunch of extra copies so they have become fodder for my experiments <laughs> or collage fodder that's the word I'm so worried that I'm gonna lose the pin in my glitter glue because it says you have to use a stainless steel pin um, and I know I've used a pin in another one that was not the pin that came with it and it turned the okay in my glossy accents because I lost the lid um, it turned the glossy accents orange so I'm guessing the pin was not stainless steel so this is another one of Gina's images oh and the little words I stuck on there like the inspire and I'll put another word over here she has a digi download that is designed to go on to small label paper um, I didn't have the small label paper so I just printed it on bigger label paper some words don't work out but um, I just cut them out and stick them on see like right here could probably have done it on a full sheet of label paper I didn't have that at the moment either when I printed that I've had that for a little while. Alright, so I think it's about ready. Oh, I decided for this one it needed some um, coherence or consistency. So I did put a poem on there. Oh, let me go grab my spool so I can read you the poem. And it's by Joseph Norris, and it just happens to be a um, a book I bought at the thrift store for the cover. <laughs> so um, I didn't pick it for the poetry. I'm, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm unwinding it with one hand over here, holding my iPad, which I'm recording on with the other hand. All right, so I'm gonna read you the poem. Drop a pebble in the water and its ripples reach out far. Give a smile to someone passing, thereby make his morning glad. And the sunbeams dancing on them may reflect them to a star. It may greet you in the evening when your own heart may be sad. Oh, this is hard with one hand. Do a deed of simple kindness, though its end you might may not see. It may reach like widening ripples down a long eternity. I thought that was a nice poem. It's all about doing kindness to others and how it might come back to you and um, have a positive effect in your own life. So there it is. See, I cleaned off my desk so you could see the strip. All right, so the plan is to use some washi to attach it to the spool. I could use something more permanent, but I wasn't sure. This is washi tape. I, I have a bunch of it, and this is one I never use. So I figured I would do that. And I was thinking I'd put it under and then flap it over, and then I'm like, well, actually, it would be better because this is the pretty side to put it on this side and then not worry about where it ends on the other side. That way I could control better where it's going. And for all intents and purposes, you could decorate both sides of this. It doesn't have to be just one side. Like if you were doing a journal or something, you could do both sides. All right, so I'm getting that 
all over and hoping I do it straight. I do this and then there's some things I let stick out on the edges. Might have been a little too long, so it does roll up a little um, strangely on the spool. But I think it was a fun idea. What do you think? Give me your opinion. Would you do it? The spools aren't very expensive. They're on at Gina's Etsy store. Hopefully she's got some in stock. <laughs> I'm just making sure they all line up. Like I said, that hard butterfly was a little difficult. I wouldn't do anything really stiff if you were going to do this. Just paper. And a lot of people sew them right through the paper. If you've got a sewing machine, that works great. <laughs> but there it is. have some snapshots of it here for you. I hope you liked that. If you did, let me know again. And if you like what you see and would like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.